Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful day to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Don't make a difference what's going on on the outside. We can still have joy on the inside. So we welcome uh, to our Facebook Live uh, viewing audience. Amen. Praise God. Well, I got a word for you today that's going to help all of us tremendously. And I can't wait to get into the word of God. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, we just thank you that this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, we thank you that as we get into your word, we thank you that your word will come alive to us. And Father, I just thank you right now. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, I thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we just thank you for a word spoken in due season today. And Father, we thank you that this word will be for this hour as well. And Father, we thank you that we'll not be hearers only, but we'll be doers of your word. So Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Well, if you got your Bibles, amen, open up your Bibles. And we're going to start there in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 6. Today, I would like to talk to you about Jehovah Shalom. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Jehovah Shalom, which is the Prince of Peace. In fact, that's one of God's seven redemptive names. Again, that is Jehovah Shalom, Prince of Peace. Especially some of the things that we're going through right now. Uh, uh, you know, you got the different viruses and just a lot of things are happening in our nation around the world, in our churches. And I think this is a word for this hour. That is Jehovah Shalom. He wants to be Jehovah Shalom to all of us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to look there. Let's begin there at Judges uh, chapter 6. And we're going to take a look at verse 23. As the Lord speaks to Gideon, and we see earlier in that chapter how that the children of Israel had gotten away from the Lord. You know, the Lord had delivered them out of the hands of Egypt, brought them out of bondage and all that. Then they got disobedient against God. So God had to send a prophet there to straighten out a few things. And then finally he comes and he speaks to Gideon and said, I like you, Gideon. In so many words, Gideon, you have found favor with me. You are a mighty man of valor. Now I want you to go and deliver your people. Gideon then says, Lord, you got to be kidding me. Who am I, Lord? He said, yeah, I, my hand is on you, Gideon, and I'll be with you, Gideon. So Gideon goes on to say, well, Lord, you want to show me a sign. You got to do something, Lord. How in the world am I going to do it? My family is poor, and et cetera. He come up with all these excuses, but God believed in Gideon. But Gideon said, Lord, I need a sign. So we see here in Judges uh, chapter 6 and verse 23, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto you, fear not. Amen. There's that word again. Amen. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day is yet an Oprah of over Desertites. But notice there, Gideon built an altar there, and he called it what? Jehovah Shalom, which means, translated Hebrew, the Prince of Peace. Now, turn with me to Isaiah 53. Amen, praise God. Isaiah 53. I mean, I got a word from the Lord for you today Amen. that's going to help you out and help you get through this season or whatever is going on. Amen. Praise God. People are saying all different kinds of things. You don't know what to believe nowadays. But one thing we do know what to believe, and that is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 53, and let's take a look at verse 5. Again, we're talking about Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Look there in verse 5. It said, but he was wounded. Who was? Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And notice here, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
the chastisement of our peace. Our peace was upon Jesus, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. And if you further translate that, Jehovah Shalom, notice there, it says nothing missing or nothing broken. It goes on to say soundness, having soundness of mind, about rest, quietness, preservation. That's right, Jehovah Shalom, he'll preserve you. He'll cause it to be quiet in your life, uh, have soundness of mind, nothing broken, nothing missing. Also means health. Uh, I mean, say, hey, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that as well. It means health. Also means prosperity and safety. Yeah, Jehovah Shalom. He'll bring about prosperity and safety. Jehovah Shalom means that there'll be health and healing there. Amen? But notice there, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our guilt and iniquity. This is what the Amplified Bible says. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain, needful to obtain peace and well-being. I like to put that in there with Jehovah Shalom as well. Well-being. I mean, you know that that means a lot. Having your being, being well. Peace and well-being for us was upon, for us was upon him. I like to say this, that Christians should never, Christians should never be void of peace. Christians should never be void of peace. Now, you know, uh, as we're going through uh, this coronavirus, and of course they keep naming it, add more names to it, whatever's going on, guys, you know, you, you know, you can see fear in people's eyes, you know, and, and you, oftentimes you can hear people talking about fear. The other day I went to just go get a little bit of toilet paper and put it like to ran me out of there. Folks were looking at me like, look, you better get back in that line. I got there almost, what, 5.30 in the morning, and there was already a line there, people in fear that all the toilet paper's gonna run out. Just people in fear everywhere, but notice there, Christians should not be void of fear because Jesus purchased our peace over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. He paid for our peace over 2,000 years ago, so we should not be void of peace. If, if you're born again, you already have the peace of God residing on the inside of you. All you got to do now is just tap into it. I said, all you got to do it's just tap into it. Why? Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, and I'll show you. Your reborn, recreated spirit, once you became born again, the fruit of your human recreated spirit, it resides on the inside of you. And one of those fruits is called peace. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit of the human recreated spirit is what? Love, joy, and what's the next one? Peace. peace. There it is. Peace. Jehovah Shalom. Peace. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Peace. Soundness of mind. Peace. Rest. Well, you can find rest unto your souls. Peace. How about quietness? How about preservation? How about health? How about prosperity? How about safety? All this resides on the inside of you the day that you became born again. So we shouldn't be looking for no peace. We need to just tap into the peace that we already have. So again, we don't have to find peace. Oh, child, I'm just trying to find my peace. I'm looking for peace. No, you don't have to find it. We simply need to enjoy what we already have. How about that? Amen. Enjoy what we already have in Christ Jesus. We have the peace of God. We have Jehovah Shalom in which he is the prince. He is the prince of peace. Yeah. Not trying to create it. He's the prince. He's the giver of peace. But one thing that's needful to know, you'll never go beyond your revelation of God. Yeah. You'll never go beyond, another way of saying it is, the will of God known. See, he'll become whatever your revelation of him is. He'll become whatever, I'll say it again, 
He'll become whatever your revelation of God is. Every time God turns, you'll see a different side of him. I want to encourage you to get a revelation on God that he is Jehovah Shalom, that he is the Prince of Peace. And the day that you got born again, that peace resides on the inside of you. And all you got to do now is just tap into that peace. Just, you don't have to go looking for some peace. You don't have to go look over here or look over there. And, no, no. That peace is on the inside of you. All you got to do is stir up the gift of God. That's, right. That's what I'm trying to say. Stir up the gift of God. Amen. Amen. You got to stir that peace up on the inside of you. But you got to get a revelation about him being the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hosea chapter 4 and, and verse 6 tells us that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And that's why it seems as though you got people running around as if, you know, their heads is cut off, and especially Christians. And I guarantee you, when I went to that particular grocery store, uh, some of them Christians, I mean, they were grabbing, putting five packs of toilet paper. I said, slow down. Allow somebody else to get a pack of toilet paper. I said something. That's right, Pastor. You said something? Yeah, I said something. Should everybody want a pack of toilet paper? People are in fear. Just in fear. But no, we have Jehovah Shalom. We have the Prince of Peace. You don't have to go looking for peace. Peace, look within yourself. You are born again believer, amen? It was on Calvary's cross that Jesus stripped Satan of all his authority and power. Then, guess what? God transferred that authority and power over to us, the born again believers. That's right, we have power. That's right, we have authority over the devil. Turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, I got a word from the Lord for you, and I'm just getting started. Oh, I'm just getting started. I'm excited about this thing. Are you excited about it? Glory to God. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and verse 19. You know what Jesus said in verse 19? He said, Behold, I give unto you, unto you, the born-again believer, delegated authority and power. He said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. That's demons. I don't care what the virus is. It's a demon. Yeah. It, it comes from hell. Yeah. Satan yeah. comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. And you've been given power over this virus out here and over whatever else. The virus ain't the only thing people are going through right now. That's just one of the big things happening right now. But you've been given power. Jesus said in verse 19, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over half, oh. Oh. over a few. Oh. Oh. No, it says over all the power, over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. Say it again, nothing. nothing. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. You don't have to be afraid of the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf. No, you don't have to be afraid of the devil. No. you got power over the enemy, That's right. over all his power. Now, the only way the devil can defeat us is if we don't exercise our authority, if we don't exercise our power over the enemy. you got to exercise. you got to walk it out, appropriate it. Amen? And we've been given weapons to defeat the enemy. Think about it. We got the name of Jesus. Has anybody forgotten about the name of Jesus? Yeah. We do have the name of Jesus, don't we? Yeah. We got the word of God that's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And then we got the Holy Spirit. We got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We got that dunamis, that dynamite power and ability of God residing on the inside of us. We can't lose with what we have. Look at that. We got the name of Jesus, huh? We got the word of God, and we got the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, let's move on and talk about something a little bit different. Let's talk about robbers or thieves of our peace. I wonder, what are some of the robbers and thieves of our peace? Now, we already know that this virus is trying to rob us of our peace. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. But there are other things out there uh, that comes to steal and kill and destroy. How about John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10? Let's just set the record straight. Amen. 
John's Gospel, chapter 10, John 10, 10, a very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. The thief. Yeah. Who can tell me who the thief is? That's right. The devil sleuth. The thief cometh not but for to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. What? Steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, What? I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So let's just set the record straight. God is not the author of all this stuff that's going on. I said God is not the author of all this stuff that's going on. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Let's take a look at some more enemies of our peace, robbers of our peace, thieves of our peace. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Amen. Parable of the sower, sowing the word of God. But there were certain things that came to steal the word. I said, there were certain enemies, certain things that came to steal the word of God. Just like today, there are certain things that have come into the earth that's trying to rob us of our joy, trying to rob us of our peace, trying to rob us of our health. Let's take a look at a few of these. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Let's pick up there in verse 14. The sower soweth the word. These are they by the wayside where the word of God is sown. But when they have heard, mm. Satan comes how fast? Mm -hmm. How fast? Mm -hmm. He comes immediately. Just like right after this program is over with, Satan's going to come immediately to try to steal the word of God that I'm planting on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. So you just be aware. Mm -hmm. Be aware of that. Satan comes immediately and taketh away what? The word that was sown in their hearts. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they had heard the word immediately received with gladness, but don't have no root in themselves, so endure but for a time. Afterward, now let's take a look at some of the thieves that's coming to rob us of our peace. When affliction, hang on boy, affliction, how about the next, or persecution, uh, affliction, no doubt, that's what this disease is all about, this virus, affliction, persecution, arise for the word's sake. Note that for the word's sake. Yay. Immediately they are offended. Yeah. But then let's move on down here to verse 19. Verse 19 says, and what else? The cares of this world. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. You know the Bible says be careful for nothing. Amen. Don't be anxious about anything. But there's a lot of cares in this world. The Bible said that in the last days, young men's hearts shall fail them because of what has come upon the earth. You got to be careful with the cares of this world. The everyday mundane things that we do, you got to be so careful there. Note that the cares of this world and deceitfulness of what riches and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word and cause it to become unfruitful. These are the different enemies that try to come and rob us of our peace. Amen. So, you know, don't be ignorant of Satan devices. Right. Is that not what the Word of God said? He said, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Right. And you know Satan going to try to bring all this stuff for one main reason, yeah. to get us off of the Word. Right. To get us off the Word. It's, it's to a point now, you know, saying that you can only have about 10 people to come to church. And then shut down, the devil trying to shut down all the churches now. Yeah. Is he crazy? Trying to shut the church down. Trying to shut down everything else in this earth. Even trying to shut the church down. Satan is after that word. Yeah. Yep. Satan's after that word. So we got to be so careful about that. Don't be deceived. Because huh? the devil's out there and he's trying to rob us of our peace. He's trying to rob us. Trying to get us away from Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. Trying to get us away from the Prince of, Prince of Peace. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Now. Let's move on and talk about something else. God wants us to walk in perfect peace. Oh, I got a word for you. I said God wants us to walk in perfect peace. God wants you to walk in perfect, mature peace. Hallelujah. And peace, if you look it up in the Hebrew, once again, shalom means to be in perfect harmony, 
tranquility of mind. This is from the Hebrew. Tranquility of mind, quietness, soundness, safety, preservation, rest, prosperity, health. There's so many different things that come with Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace. But God wants us to experience this in our life. Harmony. Where you can just live and walk in harmony and tranquility of mind. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We live in a day where a lot of people's minds are sick. Mm, yeah. That's another subject for another day. And then quietness. I don't know about you. I love when it's quiet. Yes. Yeah. I can think better. Just yeah. everything is clear and quiet. And then sound. How about safety, where we can live in safety? How about Jehovah Shalom, the peace of God, will preserve you. Yeah. You'll look good after all these years. God will take care of you. You'll be well kept. How about rest? Where you can find rest unto yourself. That's Jehovah Shalom, yeah. Prince of Peace. How about prosperity? Prosperity. Prosperity, just not money. Just prosper in everything, even as your soul prosper. And uh, health. Right now, a lot of people, oh, their health means everything. Yes. Amen. But how do you walk in this perfect peace? God, yes, it is the will of God that all of us walk and live in this perfect peace. Number one, how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Keep your mind on him. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You get that one? That's the first thing. How do you walk in this perfect peace? Uh, the peace of God that you're going to have quietness and solace and all the different things. Yeah. Number one, you're going to have to keep your mind on them. Mind. Watch this now. Don't get mad. Look out. Don't get mad. you got to turn that television off every now and then. Right. Yeah, you knew I was going there. Right. Not the television, because you got to remember, television. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, let me balance it out before drop your rocks. Drop your rock. Let me balance it out. There's nothing wrong with being aware, and there's nothing wrong with being informed. But we got to be careful not to become overly concerned to where the news media takes over our thought life and replaces the Word of God. You get that? We got to be careful not to listen in so hard and so much. Now, I think all of us say, hey, I watch the news, but I get what I need to get. Amen. Daily, just to see where we're at. Being pragmatic, there's nothing wrong with that. But then there comes a time, you got to turn that thing off and get in the Word of God. Yeah. So you got to keep your mind stayed on Him. Again, there's nothing wrong with being aware. Let me make it clear. I'm not telling you to turn your TV off. Don't go doing that. I ain't turning mine off. Okay? Why? Because I want to be aware and informed. But not to the degree where media, social media, just takes my thought life over right. yeah. uh, and replaces the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't allow the social media to become all consuming. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Oh. Where it just consumes yeah. you. Amen. Your mind is just on worldly things and just the coronavirus. Every time, everything about you, virus, virus. Go to bed at night, virus. Wake up in the morning, virus. Hey, it's all day. Somewhere you got to say, whoa, stop. Let me get into the Word of God. Yeah, Let me get into the Word of God. Because you got to remember that television is exactly how it's on. It tells a vision. Yeah. Amen. I said amen. Yeah. Now, some people know more about the virus than what the Word of God has to say. I mean, they can give you the details, the stats, and all that. Now, and then you ask them, well, what is the Word of God saying? Well, I don't know what the Word of God is saying. Oh, no, 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 well, see, you too involved. You, you, you are overly involved. I got a scripture. Well, show me in the Bible. I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. And these are the words of Jesus. So, again, there's nothing wrong with being aware and informed. And everybody ought to be. But not to the degree that you don't even get into the Word of God. Not to the degree that you don't have a prayer life. Not to the degree where it just takes you over. Notice what Jesus said in verse 25. 
He said, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. Take no Underline that right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the first thing was what? Keep your mind on him. If we're to work, walk in perfect peace, if we're to walk in perfect peace, first thing is you got to keep your mind on him, on Jesus. Therefore, I say unto you, verse 25, take no thought for your life. For what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Is that not what's going on in society today? Nor yet for your body. What you shall put on. Is this not life more than meat? And the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap. Nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more or better than they? Which of you by taking thought. Underline that. Which of you by doing what? Taking thought, human reason, using your gray matter, as it were. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? In other words, by you taking thought, you can't change a thing. You remember the song, <laughs> don't you worry about a thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't change a thing. That's right, that's right. Amen. Verse 28, and why take ye thought? He said it again. So anytime somebody says something once, then twice, then three times, then four times, they're trying to get a point across to you. Verse 28, and why take ye thought for raiment or clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if thou so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast to the oven, shall he not, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye a little faith. He comes back around again in verse 31. Therefore, what? Take no thought. So many times of that? Let's see. One, two, three. That's four times, five times. He's trying to get Jesus is trying to get a point across to his guys. He said, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether shall we be cold? But well, after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all. The Lord already know what you have need of. That's right. And then he goes on in verse 33 and said, now seek ye first. Oh, now, hey. second, first. third, first. fourth, first. after you watch social media, no, after you watch the news, no. See, if you shouldn't wake up turning on the television to coronavirus. Right. You should wake up and turn on the Word of God. Oh, yeah. Pick your Bible up. Pray. What the other step? Pray to pray whichever way you go. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Whoa. So you need some stuff added to you? Uh -huh. You need toilet paper and all that. Yeah, you get it now, don't you? Yeah, you need a lot of things. Some you need help, healing, and all that. We'll seek the king. Another way of saying it. Seek God's way of doing things. Seek God's way of doing things. Then he says it again in verse 34. Take therefore no thought. He just said it again. Take therefore no thought. He's trying to get a point across. Another translation says this. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Oh, that takes it to a whole other level, don't it? Don't even think about it. He said, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought of, for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil there. Um, but it's a shame that some people know more about the virus than they know about the word of God. Yeah. How about Isaiah 26, 3? Hallelujah. Y'all getting something out of this? Amen. Yeah. We need to get back to the Word, y'all. We need to stay in the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. I don't care what's going on. Stay in the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. Seek ye first God's way of doing things. Then all this other stuff that we need, prosperity, finances, toilet paper, you put it all in there. God will make sure that it gets you. Yeah. Verse 3, Isaiah 26, 3. Said, Thou will keep him in what? Perfect peace. Whose mind, underline that, whose mind is staying on thee because he do what? He trusts in thee. Yes. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is staying on thee. Glory to God. Oh. 
<laughs> Let's drop down verse 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Not just when it's the right thing to do, but forever. For the Lord Jehovah is an everlasting strength. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind stayed on thee. Notice here what the Amplified Bible says here by Isaiah 26 and verse 3. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace. Glory to God. In constant peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he, oh, y'all ain't ready for this. Why? Because he commits himself to the Lord. He leans on you and hopes confidently on the Lord. I believe I'm reading that again. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, this amplified, whose mind is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and of course to you is the Lord. Yes. And confident and hopes confidently in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then verse 4 from the Amplified Bible said, So trust in the Lord. Yes. Commit yes. yourself to him. Yes. Lean on him. Hope confidently in him forever, for the Lord is an everlasting rock. He's the rock of ages. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. I to preach myself back. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, what often happens is we lose our focus when the devil attacks. Yeah, when the devil go attacking, oftentimes we lose our focus. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4. But notice there, the first point is you got to keep your mind stayed on me. You got to keep your mind on him. I said, you got to keep your mind on the Lord. You got to be careful what you're thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, now if you're sitting next to somebody there, I don't know exactly what you're doing. But tell them, keep your mind on Jesus. That's right. Keep your mind on Jesus. Tell them, tell them, keep your mind on the Lord. And when you do that, he'll keep you in perfect peace. I don't care what's going on around you. I don't care how bad it looks. And you keep your mind on the Lord, and he'll make sure that you will experience the peace of God. He'll make sure that you experience quietness and safety and preservation, prosperity. The Lord will take care of you. But you got to keep your mind on him. Philippians 4 and, and verse 7. Now let's back up. Verse 6. Be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Now notice what happened. Verse 7. Then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Now you know what? I think all that's wonderful. Thank God for prayer and all that, but oh, I love verse 8. Mm -hmm. And this is what I really think really triggers it all. Because you got to be careful. you you got to keep your mind on him. Yeah. He said, finally, brothers, talking yeah. to the saints, yeah. talking to the Paul, talking to the church of Philippi, he said, finally, brothers, whatsoever things that are true, yeah. oh, boy, whatsoever things that are true, not just Whatsoever things are our fact. Mm -hmm. The coronavirus is a fact. Come on, yeah. The word of God on, is the truth. Right. And the truth always out trump yeah. a fact. Hey. Yeah. Meditate on that one, guys. I ain't got time. Hey. Amen. Let's move on. Whatsoever things that are true. Whatsoever things that are honesty. This is where your thoughts ought to be. This is where your mind should be. Whatsoever things that are honest. Whatsoever things that are just. Whatsoever things that are pure. Whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. Underline that. Circle that. Think on these things. And when you think on these things, like we read in Isaiah 26, 3, I'll keep you in perfect peace, whose mind has stayed on thee. Now, when you think on these things, the peace of God will kick in. Yeah. He said, think on these things. Don't think on nothing else. Think on these things. Now, I looked at that word think in the Greek. It means oh, meditate. Man. Oh. It means meditate or ponder. Come on now. I like this final one. 
take into account. Come on now. Ooh. Yeah. Good God Almighty. He said, take into account all these things that are good, lovely, honest, just, and pure. Uh, meditate on those things. Ponder those things. Which we say it over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. I want to see what it says from the Amplified Bible. It says here, think, listen carefully, think, think. continually. Yeah, continually. Center your mind and implant them implant. in your heart. Yeah. yeah. These are the things that you ought to be thinking on. Mm. Think continually on these things. Mm -hmm. Center your mind on these things. Implant this into your heart. Yeah. Put a stamp on your heart. Oh, what, okay. Thinking on good things. Oh. Thinking on good things. Not thinking on television. Yeah. Oh. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! I might run around here. Glory to God. Hold your horses. It gets better. Turn with me to Colossians. Woo! Colossians chapter 3. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm having a church up in here. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The first step, if you want to walk in perfect peace, you got to keep your mind on him. You can't allow, yeah, I'll say that. You can't allow your mind to wander. Hey, hey. Yeah. To wander. W-A-N-D-E-R. To just wander all over the place. Yeah. Or to wander. W-O-N-D-E-R. Uh, wander or wander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be careful. You got to bring your thoughts. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. You got to be careful what you're thinking on. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. And verse 1 said, if you then be risen with Christ. How many of y'all are risen with Christ? Yeah. Now watch this now. How many of y'all are born again? Yeah. That's what that means, huh? Yeah. Seek. Another word is pursue. pursue. Seek or pursue those things good, which are above. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what Christ sitting at the right hand of God. Yeah. Now watch this. Verse 2. Set your affection. Yeah. Yeah. Set. You look, you know, if you looked that up in the Greek, it said, set your mind. Set your mind. Set your mind on things above, not on the things oh. of the earth. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, set your affection. Set your, set your affection. So I looked the word of affection in the Greek. It says here, it means to be of the same mind and understand. Uh. What you saying, Pastor? Think like Christ. That's right. You know, the Bible says that we got the mind of Christ. We got to start thinking like Christ. <coughs> I say we got to start thinking That's like right. Christ. That's right. To be of the same mind and understand it. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's a mindset. Yeah. Oh, you don't want me to go there. Do you? Yeah. I heard the Holy Ghost say right there. He said, son, if, if you look at it, it's a mindset. It said, set your affection or mind on things above. In other words, it's all about a mindset. It's a mindset. What is your mindset? I got a question for you again. What is your mindset on? Is it set on the coronavirus? Or is it set on Jesus? Is it set on I'll keep thee in perfect peace? Whose mind is stayed on thee? Is it set on think on them things that are lovely, just, honest, and pure? What is your mindset up? Let me ask another question. <laughs> What do you have made up in your mind? What's already made up in your mind? What have you come to the conclusion on already? Prayerfully, it's, it's the word of God. I said, prayerfully, it's the word of God. Then the Holy Spirit talked to me. He said, listen, son, whatever you set your mind on, see, it's all about mindset. Uh -huh. I'm going to say that again because we're going somewhere. It's a mindset of what your mind is locked into. Yeah. We know that from the natural. Sometimes we lock our mind. Look, I'm going to go get me a pair of gym shoes. Oh, I'm going I'm, I'm to give me a track outfit. I'm, ladies, I'm going to go buy me a dress. I'm gonna, what is your mindset on? That's what this thing is about. What is your mindset on? Holy Spirit said, whatever you set your mind on will eventually rule and reign. 
you give it rulership in your life. That's why we got to be careful. Like the old saying, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. You got to be so careful. And then I heard the Lord say, whose report are you going to believe? <laughs> yeah, the world's report may be a fact, the coronavirus, but God's report is the truth. And the truth always outtrumps the facts. The truth was here before facts came. Come on now. Are y'all with me? In fact, the truth or God's word is more real than the facts. I'm saying a whole lot, y'all. I know I'm saying a lot. Yeah, the truth is more real than the facts. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Well, since we're already there, let's drop down to verse 15. Y'all, this thing gets better. Ooh, I don't know if I can take it, y'all. It gets better. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, verse 15. Verse 15, Colossians 3. And let the understood subject is you and I. You must allow this. Uh, are y'all with me? You must allow this. And let, or let you let. And let the peace of God. Come on. Oh, boy, boy, boy. I want to go somewhere, but I'm not going to go there. I might go there. Oh, my. Let. Allow the peace of God. So you got to let the peace of God have a perfect work in you. The peace of God's got to have a perfect work in you, but you must allow her to operate on you. Is it? And let the peace of God rule or have dominance. I like that. Or have dominance. Oh, Jesus have dominance in your heart yeah. to the which also you are called into one body and be ye thankful. And then it goes on to verse 16 and bring it down. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. How richly. Mm -hmm. See, now this is how the peace of God going to rise, y'all. You got to allow the word of God to dwell in you. Live in. Dwell in. Take up residence in you. And when you allow that to happen, then the peace of God will kick in. Yeah. Uh, you'll trigger. Maybe I can say it that way. It'll trigger the peace of God. And all wisdom and teaching and admonishing each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and gracing your hearts unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. So it's all about a mindset. Whatever, I'm going to say it again, whatever you set your mind will eventually rule and reign in your life. Whose report are you going to believe? Find a neighbor, somebody near you. I know you might be somewhere. Ask them, whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, you know, I, I went back at Colossians chapter 3. I forgot to tell you about this one here, too. It says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Well, in the Greek, that word dwell means, uh, are you ready? Oh, you ain't ready for this. Dwell means have influence. Ah. I can't tell you, Joe. It, it means to have influence. God's word ought to have influence in your life. We know that from the natural. How we allow people to have influence in our life. How we allow social media. How we allow the television to influence us all the time. Well, I'm not saying that that's always bad, but I'm just saying, why don't we allow the word of God yes. to, to influence us? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. To have influence. Glory to God. Verse 15, let the peace of God rule. That's right. Looked up the word rule. It means to be the umpire. That's right. <laughs> Let the peace of God be the umpire. Also, it goes on saying, let the peace of God determine the outcome. Yes. Let the peace of God determine the outcome. Let the peace of God direct oh, and yeah. control. Come on now. Oh, let the peace of God be the umpire. Let the peace of God determine, direct, and control. And you know, when I say umpire, first thing I think about is... Baseball. Oh, you know, y'all know I love baseball. I thought I was going to be the next Willie Mays one day. Amen. Praise God. But I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing today. Let's make that straight. Amen. 
praise God. But, you know, I, I think about baseball, how the peace of God should be the umpire. Let's say the batter is up. Let's say you're, you're up at the plate and, and you're in life. Yeah. And we're in the baseball stadium. And you're up to bat and you hit the ball and you round first base. You dig it in hard. You're going toward first base. And then the coach, he gives you the sign to keep going. He waves you to keep going. And you're on your way to second. And, you know, there might be other things in the way. And you might stumble a little bit. And then you head to second base. And then the third base coach tell you, come on, come on. And he gives you the okay to go come around the third base. And then the third base coach then turns and says, head to the plate. And then all of a sudden you head to the plate. And then you slide the ball, come throw it in. You slide, dust goes everywhere. Hey, I've been there before. Yeah, from the natural, from the spiritual. And the dust goes flying everywhere. And, and nobody knows what to call. Nobody knows what's going on, but when the dust clear, <laughs> somebody say when the dust clear, when the dust settle, the peace of God is the umpire, and he's there to say, save, save, save. You're safe in life. Save from the coronavirus. Save from who's in your job. Save your family is safe. But you got to allow the peace of God to be the umpire. Uh, you got to allow the peace of God to be the umpire. In closing, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. <laughs> Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Who's mine? You, you, it's all about that mindset. You got to get it straightened out up here. You got to get this thing straightened out. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. The peace of God will come in and rule as an umpire in your life. He'll have a final say so. Yes, yes. He'll call you the safer out. He, the outcome is in his hand. Yes. Glory to God. Sure. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, let's pick up there at uh, verse 4. Woo. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal of this world, but mighty through God to the pulling down stronghold. Casting down imaginations. Amen. One translation said, human reasonings and thoughts. Yeah. Human reasoning, see there, it's back to that mind. Yeah. You got to learn how to do what? Cast it down. I looked up the word cast down. In the Greek, it means to refute. <laughs> refute or destroy or pull down. Refute or destroy or pull down. Imagination again means reasonings and thoughts. Casting down, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that does what? Exalt itself against what? Against the word of God. Against the knowledge of God. You got to cast that stuff down. I said, you got to cast it down. I said, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm far above and not beneath. Yeah, I'm the victor. I'm the, not the victim. Yes, I'm yes. the victor, not the victim. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, underline every thought. See? Every thought. Them thoughts, there we go again with them thoughts. Every thought to what? The obedience of Christ. Yes. Verse 6 says, and having in a readiness, underline the word readiness, you have to be ready at all times. You never know when Satan is going to throw yeah, negativity yeah. your way. Yeah. Having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Yeah. You got to cast those thoughts down. You got to cast down those imaginations, those human reasonings. You got to be ready to cast down thoughts of failure. You got to be ready to cast down contacting the virus. The virus is trying to come on you. I'll probably be the first one sick. It'll probably get more. You got to learn how to cast some of this stuff down. Hallelujah. But what if it's still? Well, whatever. You speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Amen. Yeah. You got to cast down losing in life. Whoa. You got to cast down losing your job. Some of you thinking about losing your job. They might lay me up. They may. Whatever, whatever. But put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you know, we got to be so careful. And let me say this in closing. We, we got to guard them gates. That's why you got to be careful 
not to watch too much of television because it's telling you a vision. And you gotta, you, you know, you gotta be careful what you constantly hear me. You gotta be careful what you constantly hear, see, and say. What you constantly hear, see, and say. Why? Because what you hear, see, and say paints pictures. It paints pictures. When you're watching social media, television, etc., it's painting a picture inside your mind. And sometimes we'll start seeing ourselves sick. We'll see ourselves losing our job. We'll see ourselves losing our family. We'll see ourselves just losing in life. Well, no, you got to be so careful right there. We got to guard them gates. We, we got to guard our eye gate. We got to guard our ear gate. What we allow ourselves to hear. You got to be careful what you look at. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with television. You go and get what you need to get. Then turn on a religious channel or something. Turn on the Word of God or put... Turn the TV off and get in the Word of God or something. Sing some songs. Do something positive. Play Uno. Play a game. Something. But you cannot allow the fear to overtake you. Go take a walk. Something. Don't let it overtake you. Amen. You got to change the scenery. You got to do something. Amen. But you got to guard them gates. You, know, I can, you can't sit there all day long watching that. You can't sit there all day and hear that. And because what you continue to see and hear, it's going to come out your mouth. Whatever you've been putting in in abundance is going to come out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth going to speak. Are y'all with me? I said, are you with me? Amen. Praise God. And let's close with this final scripture, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. And then we're done for the day, y'all. Y'all can say, I'm full. <laughs> I've said enough now. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If y'all getting something out of this message, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and let me get there. And verse 18. So again, we got to guard them gates. That eye gate, that ear gate. If you want to walk in perfect peace, you got to be careful what you're constantly looking at. You got to be careful what you're constantly listening to. You got to be careful what comes out your mouth, even in a joking way. You got to be so very careful. Why? Because it paints pictures. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at, Come on, oh boy, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are what? Temporal or subject to change, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal, which is the word of God. I don't care what's going on in this world today, and yes, we ought to be aware and alert and do all what we're supposed to do from the natural. Yes, I am a believer in that. Amen. Praise God. But we got to look to the word of God. God's word is eternal. But whatever's come upon the earth, this too shall pass. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Did you get something out of the word of God today? Amen. Well, glory to God. Praise God. Now, there might be someone who's watching this by way of Facebook Live. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And we don't want to allow this moment to pass by. Amen. Praise God. You know, the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Yes. And if that's you today, and you've been watching this, and you may say, well, you know, hey, I don't know if something would have happened to me that I'd make heaven my own. I'm not certain about it. Well, I want to pray with you. So I want you to repeat after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today as humble as I know how. Lord, I believe that you are Lord and that you're my Savior and that you're my Master. I turn from my old ways and I turn to you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you today. Make something wonderful out of my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You're right now born again. You've accepted Jesus Christ into your life. Amen. And we're just so happy for you in the name of Jesus. 
in just a moment, I'm going to ask my wife to come, and, and, and she just want to say a few words to you, uh, especially our supporters and our members. You know, my wife and I, we really miss you guys and us coming together physically and us being together at church, you know. It's tough, it's tough, and we miss y'all, and I know we've been getting phone calls from you guys as well. You guys, you miss us, and, and, and in just a moment, I'm going to have her to come. But let me just say this before she comes. Amen. Again, we want to encourage all of our members and supporters to view our services on Facebook Live at New Beginnings Christian Life Center. Also, Instagram at New Beginnings Plural. New Beginnings Plural, CLC. And also on YouTube channel at New Beginnings Christian Life Center. So let me say it again. Of course, you know, we're on Facebook Live at New Beginnings Christian Life Center. Instagram at New Beginnings Plural, CLC. And on YouTube channel at New Beginnings Christian Life Center. Also, as you know, New Beginnings, as we continue to just move forward, we just want you to know that we are who we are today because of the grace of God. And not just by the grace of God, but by your charitable contributions. And you know, the church has to continue to move forward. I've been talking with a few ministers and preachers and, you know, certain things have been happening with what you're giving. But I'm saying at New Beginning, my God, we're not going to have no lack at all. So we want to encourage you guys to continue to give and give your charitable contributions. You can give your tithes and offerings, amen, via on our website at newbeginningsplural.clc.org. Again, newbeginningsplural.clc.org via PayPal. Or you can just simply mail your offerings or your contributions to P.O. Box. P.O. Box 320. 658. Again, 320658. And that's Flowood, Mississippi. Again, Flowood, Mississippi. And that's 39232. 39232. And, and if you should ever have any questions or what have you, you can contact us here at the church office at 601 398. 3630. Again, 601 398 3630. And I've, I've had a wonderful time with you all today, and we're looking forward to the day that we can all come back together physically. But until then, we want to stay connected uh, through social media. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to invite my wife to come at this time, and she just want to yell at you guys and say hello in the name of Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I miss y'all. <laughs> praise the Lord. We miss each and every one of you. We're so, so thankful, though, that we're able to come together as a church family and our supporters. And I see people from out of town and, and whatnot joining us and, and come together as a body of Christ through the uh, means of social media. Now, we at New Beginnings, we're a family. We're a family, so I want to just admonish you all to reach out to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Check on them. Make sure they have everything that they need, and, they, and then they, I'm sure vice versa, they'll do the same for you. If you have extra, share it. Be there for each other. Lift each other up in prayer. Stay connected in the name of Jesus. The Lord doesn't do just anything for nothing, but he brought us together for a reason. And so when tough times come, we get even tougher. We get even tougher in our love. We get even tougher in our resolve to reach out and touch lives. We get even tougher in, uh, we get even tough, tougher in combating evil. And so we want to make sure that we stay connected with each other. If the Lord brings one of your brothers and sisters up in, in your heart, that means that you need to call them. Check on them. Make sure they have everything that they need. I know some of y'all are hoarding up toilet paper. 
I know some of you are doing that. Check and see if your brother and sister might need a roll or two. <laughs> that would be very nice. And so we want to make sure that, and like the Bible says, we have all things common. We're all together, rowing in the same way, helping one another, loving one another, checking on one another, especially checking on our seniors. Now, we're doing this Facebook Live, but a lot of them are not tech savvy. They're not media savvy. So we're going to have to make sure that we stay in contact with them, that they have everything that they need, and that they are well taken care of. And so don't think that you got all that toilet paper just for your family. You got all that toilet paper so that you can reach out and touch some other people's lives in Jesus' name. And so, Pastor and I just want to tell you all that we love you. We miss hugging and, and being there with you all. But make sure that you join us here on social media, our social media platforms. Make sure you join us on Wednesday and Sunday. And then don't just, this is a way of outreach. Don't you know the Holy Spirit got all kinds of ways to reach out to people? This is a way of outreach. Share it. Do a, a, a do a what you call it a, a, a watch party. There it is. Thanks, Dre. A watch party. Make sure you do a watch party. I mean, share it. Keep sharing it because people's lives are being changed. They that was a word from the Lord today. Thank you, honey. Oh, leave I felt like running. I had to stay seated though, but I felt like running. <laughs> but that was a word. That is a word in due season. We need to hold to God's word. We need to hear a word from our pastor. And so does your family, your friends, relatives. Everybody else needs to get the word out. Share it. Do watch party. Go to our YouTube channel and watch a recording of it. Go to Instagram and watch it on that. Uh, was it Instagram? Instagram and watch it on that. We have all these platforms. Let's be good stewards because this is a way to evangelize as well. We love you all and y'all have a blessed week. We know that we have the victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus name.